Now, am I the only one that's noticed this? I mean, this isn't, this is like, you know, do you remember that old film about how a bill becomes law? We all watch it in grade school. Well, the Associated Press and others have noted that, interestingly enough, this, this claim that the, the, the Democratic, the opposition party, wants you to believe about the number of votes needed, it's picked up by all the newspapers. Everybody says, boy, they just don't have two-thirds of the vote in the Senate. Oh, yeah, they, they're going along with this because they don't have two-thirds of the vote. Arianna Huffington, interestingly enough, says, some Democrats seem resigned to the notion that their options are limited. Henry Waxman said, if you don't have the votes, you don't have the votes. David Serrata calls, the writer for the nation, calls it the innocent bystander fable that they want you to believe in. And this is Huffington. But the truth is, Democrats have all the votes they need to stop the war if they are willing to use the power given to them by the Constitution to block the supplemental funding bill unless it includes a deadline for bringing the troops home. She goes on to say, quoting Norm Ornstein, whatever the White House sends to the House is constitutionally merely a suggestion, quote. And Huffington says, the prerogative to bring a funding bill to the floor rests entirely with the majority, which in case Democrats have forgotten, is theirs. And as for the Senate, Democrats would only have to find 41 votes to block supplemental funding bills. 41 votes. Now, I practiced law for many years, I still do, but I was a public defender for a decade. Criminal law. And you know what? Oftentimes, people get arrested with somebody else committing a crime. And you can imagine an inspector interviewing somebody who says, I had nothing to do with it. He did everything. Oh yeah, well, why do you have gloves on? Why are you carrying something out of a house that doesn't belong to you? I was just with the other guy. He took the first step. I didn't want to do it. I just went along with it after he convinced me. Don't you see? It's no defense. I mean, this would be a totally new novel theory in American jurisprudence that we're going to have a defense where we say, because they took the first step and we helped them along the way to commit this crime, that we're innocent and that we're really opposed to this burglary, although we put the gloves on and we helped carry the stuff out of the house, right? There's a concept, aiding and abetting. You're complicit in the crime and you are as liable as the other guy if you've committed this crime with them. That's what's going on in this country. And rather than buy into rhetoric that we hear over and over again, one party's for the war, the other party's against the war, it's simply not true. And we need to let go of this innocent bystander theory that they're promulgating. What do we say to the, the Patriot Act? Here is something that the Democrats tell us, oh, the bad Patriot Act, oh, the Bush regime, oh, if Ralph Nader hadn't a run, oh my God, we wouldn't have the war, we wouldn't have the Patriot Act. Boy, this is interesting. The House of Representatives, it was introduced October 23, 2001. This is the original Patriot Act. It was introduced by Sensenbrenner, October 23. You know when it passed the House? Introduced October 23rd, it passed the House October 24th. You know when it passed the Senate? October 25th. You know when it was signed into law? October 26th. Now, I don't know about you, but just reading the notes about the Act would take more than three days. Section titled 201, Authority to Intercept Wire, Oral, Electronic Communications. 203B, authority to share electronic wire oral interception. 206, roving surveillance authority. 207, duration of FISA surveillance of non-US persons. 215, access to records and other items under Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. 223, civil liabilities for certain unauthorized disclosures. Okay, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, it was just after 9-11, right? So what about the reauthorization of it? Well, it happened before the Democrats 
took the Senate. So you know what? We lost that vote too. It was 251 to 173 in the House. And in the Senate, um, there were only, guess how many senators that voted against it? Ten. Only one voted against it the first time. The second time, ten. But let's go back to that House vote. It's really interesting. 207 Republicans voted yes, 18 voted no. Democrats, 44 voted yes. This time, 155 said no. You know what would have happened if the Democrats that voted yes, the 44 that voted yes, had voted no instead? Guess what? The bill would have lost. It would have lost 217 to 207. Even though they didn't have a majority, there were enough Republicans that were breaking away from this. Don't you see the problem here?